Welcome to Covenant Fusion Church, everybody who's here in person, those who are watching online, and if you couldn't be here this morning, I know we have some who are not feeling well, we're praying for you. Before we get to the prayer request and Psalm 91, I just want to remind everybody of our fast, fast for the nation, amen. amen. This is our second Sunday in. We want to remind everybody, if you haven't joined in yet, if you still want to, it is not too late. Even to the last day, it's not too late to stand for our nation. We want to remind everybody that's October 2nd through the 22nd. I hope everybody is doing well. Um, stay, stay determined. Stay committed with your fast. There are things that are coming. We know as soon as we fast, even before when we officially start, when we made that commitment, the devil tries to attack us, mm -hmm. knock us down. Um, he tries to make us lose our voice, <laughs> um, but God is good. He's helping us to stand. We're not doing this alone. We're not standing alone, and we're standing together for 21 days to pray and fast. Don't forget, for those of you who are watching online, you can follow our Facebook page. Join the UAT, United America Tour Group. That's where we're posting all the daily updates. Today's point, our scripture point, is Nehemiah 9.13. You came down also on Mount Sinai and spoke with them from heaven and gave them just ordinances and true laws, good statutes and commandments. Amen. Amen. Isn't God good that even before we ever, man ever thought, let's have government, let's have leaders, leaders in our country, God was our one true leader. Amen. He gave us just ordinances, true laws, good statutes and commandments. And I was just speaking with a good friend about this the other day. When God puts boundaries, it's because he loves us. That's right. When he gives us laws to follow, when he gives us commandments to be obedient to, it's not to restrict us, it's actually to set us free. Amen. We believe that our nation is free. Amen? Are we a free nation? Amen? So let us pray, God, that we follow your righteous laws. Just join me, CFC, with your faith right now. Those watching, put your faith into this, God, for God, with God, that his righteous laws would take precedence in our nation again, that your righteousness, your trueness, Lord, you are the truth, the way, the truth, and the life, that your righteousness and truth would prevail again in our nation. Amen. We thank you, Lord God, that we will, we commit to you as Covenant Fusion Church, that we will walk in them. Yeah. We will walk in your laws. We will walk in your ways, your true laws, your just ordinances, your commandments, God, that you've given us to follow to set us free. We choose to walk in your ways. Lord, let us be the light and the example to all those around us personally, as a, as a church, God, as the church in the nation. We're not just asking for Covenant Fusion Church, but for the church in the United States of America, that you would use us to be the example, to be the light of this, that we would not be looking for perfection, but that we would be looking for obedience out of love. And we do love you, Lord, and we want to follow you. We thank you for your righteous and true laws prevailing in our nation again. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, Father, for listening to our prayer. Before I step down and ask Sheila to come up, I would like to give you a quick update. We've had some states added, amen, since Wednesday. So our current list of states that are with us in the stand are Alabama, Arizona, Florida, Georgia, Illinois, Kansas, Maryland, Minnesota, Missouri, North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, and West Virginia. Wow. Isn't God good? I think we had like two or three more states added. We've got people all, oh yeah, you can clap for that. <laughs> so God is good. He's joining all the states. We're believing for all 50 states. Amen. So continue to share this, especially with the states that haven't been checked off yet. And thank you for being here again this morning. And I'd like to welcome Sheila up. Thank you, Sheila. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. I would like to remind you that we are, Covenant Fusion Church is a praying church. 
and we would love to have you. If you have a need, I don't care how small the prayer request is or how big it is. Nothing is too small or too big for God. Huh? Oh, I see. I'm talking about the number? So I would like to give you the number so that you can call anytime you need a prayer request. Remembering coming into an agreement with your need is a powerful thing. Yeah. And we will pray according to God's will and God's glory and His purpose in your life. And believe when we pray that you ask God whatever your need is, He will answer your prayer. So if you have a prayer need, call 407-490-4019. The number is 407-490-4019. Thank you. And now let's do the wonderful Psalms 91 that we pray all the time, that we can trust God and know He's taking care of us. He's protecting us. He's sending us angels to watch over us. And we say this prayer every time we get together and we say it ourselves at home. Um, mm -mm. That's not it. Oh, here we go. He, hmm, I can't see his way. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you have an amateur up here. <laughs> because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near you, near your dwelling. For he shall give you his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall not be afraid. The young lion and the serpent, you shall trample on the foot. Because he has set his love upon you, therefore I will deliver him. I will stand on high, because he is in my name. He shall call on me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him, and show him my salvation. Amen. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge. We finished it. We finished it. Oh, we did? <laughs> oh my gosh. It's okay. no, God took me up in the spirit for a moment. <laughs> Goodness, I didn't know I missed all that. Well, thank you, Sheila. I'm excited for people who have willing hearts. And when we're alive, anything can happen, ladies and gentlemen. Guess what? It does. So, you know, we roll with the flow. You have to know how to abound and obey. You know, you have to be able to go through the motions, no matter what you're going through, with a smile. And she walked out of here with a smile. Even when you have problems, God always seems to come through. Amen. Well, I'm excited. I'm up here today to receive our tithes and offerings. And uh, I started out telling you that the church can't save anybody. And I want you to remember that. But we surely can go serve everybody. And part of serving is giving. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're not a giver, you're not really a part of the God's kingdom. If you are not a giver in every area of your life, and I'm going to say it, especially your finances. I know a lot of people don't like talking about this, and some people don't even talk about it in church. They just leave a basket, don't do no teaching, and they, you know, they just roll the dice and hope people understand God's principles. You know, we're supposed to train them in the way they should go. My people perish from a lack of knowledge is because if you don't have knowledge, you don't understand what even your finances are for. So when I say that we can serve everyone, it's supposed to be serving in every area of your life. I can tell you, I've seen more people's lives change by what we did than what we said any day of the week. I've been around the world on missions work, and I can tell you it takes money, ladies and gentlemen. And when we give, I watch people do exactly what I said. When we serve, then God can come and save Remember that. It's not you. When you go, you represent God. You don't have the saving power, but your works is evidence that God is in you. And then they ask, well, why? Then you can tell them why. And guess what? Your finances came through. And they knocked the home run right out of the park and, and, and put flowers in hell and a person in heaven. Yeah. Amen? Amen? So remember that. Your, 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 what your little tiny seed does 
it becomes a mountain. Amen. And it's been a mountain the enemy can't overcome because we have a hedge of protection around the base of that mountain once we sow it. Amen? Amen. So I pray today that as you're getting ready to sow, that you believe that you can make a difference. you got to believe to receive. It's impossible to please God without faith. So you see this check? I was ready before I came with the check, ladies and gentlemen. Are you Amen. ready? You know the problem here I see in the United States? We're always late. We're never ready. We wait till we get there and before someone tells us to do something instead of praying about what we're supposed to do and have it ready. Because God love you know, as a father, I love my, my children are ahead of the curve. When they're before the, 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 the back of the, they don't sit in the back, they're in the front. They're ready to move when God says move. And when you move with God, he's right there. But man, if you're always having to catch up and catch up and catch up and he's always trying to pull you, you know, that bothers a father. I can tell you that right now bothers me so I know God's no different he created me in the image of God and he, so so are you so those traits that he have it's built into us so today ladies and gentlemen as you give believe that you're going to receive whatever you need all right so have your have something in your hand God can do something with it you have nothing in your hand willing to release it God can't do something with nothing but he can do something with a little seed so let's pray father we are so grateful that you set up seed time and harvest Lord I pray today as we are praying, Father, that people are receptive to being your hands and feet. That we release, God, what you give us to be good stewards of the Lord. It's not ours, and we openly admit it, Lord. So we pray today, Father, that you will give us eyes to see your will and ears to hear your direction to where we're to go with whatever we're given, Father. As we sow into this church or any church around the world, let the church do its job and rise up and be good stewards of whatever we receive, Father. Let this money that comes in, these finances that not only take care of this building and this church, go out and be able to make a life-changing difference in people's circumstances, Father. That these finances will be able to be the hands and feet of you, Lord, from heaven, coming through us and going to people, Lord. Let people's lives be changed from what we do, Father, in Covenant Fusion Church. And if you give today, I pray, Father, a hedge of protection around you and everything that you own, that no weapon formed against you will prosper. The enemy cannot touch it. It is being under the hedge of protection of God. It is covered. You are directed, and you will be blessed to be a blessing in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. But to God be the glory. I'm excited. Keep fighting the good fight on your fast, ladies and gentlemen. Keep praying. We got a few more weeks to go. And I'm excited because God's going to take the chains and break them off of the strongholds that the enemy has in your life. When you don't quit, God won't quit either. The only way you lose is if you quit. And I believe I'm talking to winners and not losers. I believe that you're going to finish the race like Paul. Finish strong and ready to receive the prize. God bless you. Pastor Street's coming to give the message. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you, God. God is good, amen? amen? We always would start with that. <laughs> you know, the uh, Bible talks about affliction. I think that's one of the things that uh, we tend to ignore because nobody signs up for affliction. Nobody wants affliction, nobody wants pain. Nobody uh, likes to be in a place uh, where they are not in control. We always uh, uh, put ourselves in a place where we don't want to uh, lose that control or lose that uh, status where we are not dictating terms. But the uh, <coughs> Bible talks about this very clearly. That, uh, forgive me, I'm a little uh, not feeling that good, but uh, bless God, God's healing power is working in and through me. Amen? Amen. You know, as my wife was telling, Every time we fast, every time we are trying to make a difference uh, around, the devil will always find a way to attack. Yeah. One, he attacks your children, then he attacks your health, then he attacks your finances. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he even tries to attack your reputation. So all of this uh, is to threaten us to stop from what we are doing. I have made my commitment long back. If he tries to attack me once, I'm gonna do two steps. Two steps yeah. more. So if he tries to attack me, I might increase my fast. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the way I look at it. Because I'm not going to give ground to the enemy that has no good intentions toward me. Yeah. He's got no good intentions. The Bible clearly says the thief comes only to steal, kill, and to destroy. Neither one of them are good for me. Mm -hmm. None of them are good for me. Amen? Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't have any respect for his attack. Only thing that I have for him is 
you know what, I'm going to still do this. Amen? Amen. One way or another, I'm going to still continue to do this thing because God is in the business of honoring us. If the woman with the issue of blood for 20 years, she dragged herself. Somebody was stomping on her, I would assume. Because if she can't walk with 20 years of blood issue, I'm, I'm sure she is anemic. She can't be walking. And uh, people might be stomping on her, trampling over her. She didn't care. All she cared for, like, you know what? I'm going to go touch the hem of his garment. Amen. I'm asking every one of you here. You have to push yourself to touch the hem of his garment. Amen. We reach out. We go to the next level. When we can reach through our faith portal and touch his glory, glory be to God in heaven. Amen. Glory be to God in heaven. Your life is going to have a new reset. It takes us into a newer standard. You know, most of the times when we are going through a, a corporate fasting, the purpose of that is God's, God coming in and reviving us to bring us to a next level. Yes, sure. That is the purpose of fasting. It is not about your sacrifice. Oh, I gave up Starbucks. I, I could care less. <laughs> it's about how much you draw your, drew yourself closer to God. Amen. That's more important. Yes. When we can do that, I'm all, you know, you may have health issues. You may not be able to fast at all. That's fine. Please don't put your health in jeopardy because whatever victory you gain, you have to live in it. Don't die. Yeah. <laughs> right? Amen. You know, if we can't live in our victory, what's the point of victory? Mm -hmm. So that's why don't try, don't fight to die. Fight to live. Amen. Amen? So, so, uh, I don't know where I'm going, but anyway, God has, <laughs> yeah, let, let God have his way during this time. Don't, don't let him, we are in a mission. God has given us a mission. Yeah. This is about his resurrection now. Remember this thing. Christian, an average Christian does not believe in resurrection. Wow. No, they don't. We believe in Jesus Christ as a mystical being, as a God or as a savior, whatever it is. We believe in all that. But we never believe in the resurrection power. Let me tell you something. If you don't believe in the resurrection power, you believe in nothing. <coughs> because <coughs> Christian faith, the foundation for Christian faith is resurrection. So what I mean by that? What I mean by that resurrection is anything you touch, you have the power to bring it back to life. It includes your marriage, it includes your family, it includes your finances, it includes your life, it, everything. I want us Christians to become so obstinate. I want us to become those, those arrogant people in Christ. Because we are not going to give in to the true arrogant person. <coughs> I always say this thing. <coughs> Bullies will only listen to force. The devil is a big bully. If you want to control him, use force. Amen. Not niceness. Mm, true. If you are trying to be nice, the devil is not leaving. True. I asked you nicely, leave. No. <laughs> the devil never left me. When I said, in the name of Jesus, get thee behind me, Satan. He flees. It's time the church will take the reins back rather than living at the mercy of the devil. How dare you touch me? How dare you touch my family? How dare you touch my nation? Amen. Come on, church. We have been given a commission by God that we may see his resurrection working right in front of our eyes. Resurrection is not a futuristic event. It is now event. Jesus left us with resurrection. He didn't say I will resurrect you to tomorrow. He said I am the life and I am the resurrection. Right now in the same frame. If you need something to be birthed, he is that. If you need something to be resurrected, he is that. That's why when we look at our, look at our nation, look at anything that is going around us, don't give up. Don't give up. It is for you to stand so he may do his job. I like what Pastor Warren was saying today where he said like, you know, we don't say. 
church doesn't say. Amen. We serve. And when we serve, the Holy Spirit does his job. Amen. That's why our job has to be more focused on how to serve. People have a misunderstanding about serving. You put your needs above others, that's not serving. Never serving. You have to put others' needs above you. That is serving. I'll give what I want to give. Shut up. Your giving is no good. You give what is required. Okay. The more we understand that, you know, there was a time in, my, in, in the ministry, my dad was a big uh, 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 fan of uh, uh, apologists. He likes those people that debate with others and other uh, uh, religions or other forms of belief or whatnot and try to present the gospel in such a way that they will be convinced. That sort of an argument is something that he likes for whatever reason. So when God has put this call on me, my dad would always encourage, maybe you should do that. Maybe you should become that. Truly, to honor my dad, I really wanted to. But I couldn't do it just for my dad's sake. Because my dad didn't call me for this. Okay. So I had to go back to the Lord and ask him, God, do you need me to be doing this? Where I study all the other religions, all the other things, and all that kind of stuff that would help me in, in uh, rebuffing the best. But then he asked me a question. It's so Jesus-like, right? Jesus never answers directly. Many times, if you see in the Bible, in the, in the Gospels, he, asks, he answers the question with a question. Mm -hmm. So he asked me a question, what if I will never use that in you? He didn't say I will not use it, or he didn't say I will use it. What if I will never use it? Then I had to throw it at his feet. Throw it at his feet. Even though I love debating with people. I do, for my faith. I do like to debate. But that's not what God has called me. So that's why we have to understand our service is our availability, not your desire. We have to be in that place. If we can't submit to that, you are missing your greatest blessing. <coughs> Many times we don't understand why am I not progressing. I'll tell you why. Understand how to submit that fulfill your desires. That makes a whole world of difference. And that is what our mission here is to stand. This is a submission. This is too big of a mission for us, a church, a small group of people here, a small group of believers. We are trying to change the future of this nation. True. Isn't that so godly? Mm -hmm. A few. That is so godly. Stand. Why are we standing? How are we standing? What are we standing for? And, uh, he is giving us such a commission. You know, I, 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 there was a time in, 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 when I was still in India. There was a time. This is, this is pretty much like a first open crusade or something like that. That I have been charged by God. So he tells me in my town, go, go to all the churches in your town and invite them to have a time of fast and prayer in a, in a, for an evening. Why? He asked me that because there is a severe drought in that land. The land I was living in. There was a severe drought. Farmers are committing suicide by the hundreds. By the hundreds, y'all. It's not once or two, by the hundreds. When, when it goes on and on and on, you know, uh, 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 everything looks so dark. The one thing God told me is like, pray for your government. The next, next month or so, there will be an elections. So go pray. I'm not a political person. I could care less about politics. But a leader who is up there is very important. He defines our future. Whoever is leading our land, he or she will define our future as a nation. That's where it becomes an important concern for me. It's a matter of my father's business. 
If you take away politics separately and talk to me about politics, I have least bit of interest about it. But those leaders matter to us, to our families, to our children, to our nation. That's why it matters the most for me. Amen? Amen. So when we prayed that night, we all gathered together, whoever showed up, who showed up. My, my crowd was like huge, I thought. Guess how many showed up? 70 to 80 people showed up. I thought it was like, man, I'm popular here. No, I'm not popular. I hired a, a brother of mine who supported me in this. He's a singer. He, they have a worship band. They are popular. Because of them, a lot of the people came. But anyway, <laughs> nobody knew me. But we prayed together that night. <coughs> and the elections came, and the government changed. Well. I'm not praying for a government change. I want the curse to be redeemed. In a matter of three to six months, in just a matter of three to six months, there was an abundance of water supply into the same state. Well. That's what I am more interested in. That is how we operate as God's kingdom on this earth. Amen? Amen. Amen. We are God's ambassadors. We are representing him. If you see a lack, if you see a wrong stream coming in, if you see something falling apart, you don't go crazy and say, oh my goodness, the death is upon us. No. Life be. Amen. That's our job as a Christian, as a believer, as a kingdom operator. This is something God has corrected me. I always thought I'm a kingdom builder. God corrected me, building is over. You just need to operate. God needs his kingdom operators. We are not operating as though we are in his kingdom. We are operating still as though we are in this world's kingdom. Come on church, it's time for y'all to leap. If you don't leap, you're not getting it. And I have an urgency in my spirit. It is now or never. That's why this leap is the stand. Mm -hmm. Spirit, together, America, nation, duty. Yes. Spirit, everything we do, we have to do with the Spirit of God. Amen. If the Spirit of God is not leading us, remember, I made this slogan not for fun, not for traction or whatnot, even though it may be, but I made this slogan. It is the Spirit-led pulpit that made America great. It is the spirit-led pulpit that made America great. And it is the spirit-led pulpit that can and will make America great again. It's not a man's job, it is the pulpit's job. It's not a politics job, it is the pulpit's job. When the pulpit is not doing its job, you know what is pulpit doing? Pulpit is doing government's job. In many... <coughs> In many cases, the pulpit is doing devil's job. Think about that. Think about that for a moment. That we, as his body, are operating in the enemy from whom we have been redeemed. The word that they, they use, the devil's advocate, I hate that term. We always want to talk about the negative. Yes, in some ways it is good because you have to go back and forth so you can see what are the flaws. But we, our position is not always to do devil's job. We are positioned by God to God's job, to do God's job. Amen. That is our duty as a Christian. This nation, oh, this nation is going hell in a handbasket. There's going to be a new nuclear war. There's going to be this. There's going to be this. Let me tell you something. No weapon that is formed against our nation shall not prosper. Are you with me on that? Yes. If you are, shout amen. amen. <coughs> I said shout. Amen. amen. There you go. We cannot let the weapons that are formed against us shall be able to prosper, whether it is spiritual or whether it is mental or even physical. Bible talks about if you talk to this mountain, it will go yonder. If the mountain again goes, so does the Messiah. 
Amen? Amen. I'm just studying my buttermilk. <laughs> what is you studying? I'm not doing any voodoo here. <laughs> it's ice that's making that sound. Uh. All right. Now, as I was praying about today's message, did we start? Yeah. <laughs> as I was praying about today's message, I was going in a different direction. But yesterday, when me and Pastor Warren was uh, trying to help our buddy with something, I was sitting somewhere in that open field, and the Lord says, do this for me. So I had to rewrite the whole message. That's why Pam didn't get the notes till almost like 11 last night. <laughs> what he told me was, the days that we were fasting, so far we fasted seven days. So, so far we have committed to this prayer for seven days. Don't feel guilty if you didn't fast. It's okay. It's not about forcefully fasting. It's about praying. <clears throat> the, I, I just want to go over all of these seven things that we have prayed for. Mm -hmm. This is not my mission, like I said. It is what the Holy Spirit has laid on the heart. It is important that we dig our feet in, to dig our heels in to what we are committing. And I have seen people sharing this and uh, doing uh, uh, their due diligence, but I encourage if you are not doing that, please do so. This, is, this needs to go out. This is very important. You may not see the urgency of it, but believe. I have never led you in the wrong direction, did I? No. So this is something I know it is very important. It is very important. So I encourage you, please share. Share it on your page. Share it with individuals. However you feel like there are people that can pray. There are patriots that are out there. Pray. Share with them. The people you don't even know are connecting with us. All over. And I know, united, we will make things different. Amen. So this is the, from the day one. It says, Ephesians 6, chapter 13 through 18, it talks about the armor of God, why we use the armor of God. We talked about it a little bit at our fasting time, at our uh, Friday night prayer time. But here, why, why having done all to stand, your ultimate, ultimate goal is to stand. Not for you to give up, not for you to bow down, not for you to kneel, not for you to say, I surrender. But for someone to say, I stand. The Bible even clearly says in that same verse, it says, if you stand, the devil will flee. Amen. You know, we have seen, we are seeing so much of demonic oppression, demonic activity happening now in public. <laughs> they are no longer afraid of anything. They just want to depict godlessness. Everywhere the politicians are depicting power, godlessness. News media is depicting godlessness. Every place they have only one objective. Godless society. If we came into that, if we give into that, let me tell you something, we won't have a nation. We wouldn't have a representation. We wouldn't. So that's why it's important that we stand. You know, that prayer that was there, a part of it, help us to stand against evil plans with your truth, Lord. Amen. With your truth. Truth is your shield. Your shield and buckler. You will need to use his truth. There is only one truth. That is his truth. Let all men be alive but God. God alone is the truth. If he says this is sin, so it is sin. If he says this is wrong, this is wrong. We don't wanna, we don't wanna argue with him. We don't wanna negotiate with him. You know, the notion that we have right now, my truth, your truth, that is your truth. Thank God for his salvation that works in me, otherwise I would have slapped him. <laughs> no. 
I'm just kidding. <laughs> but anyway, having done all to stand, help us to stand against evil plans with your truth, Lord, proclaiming your righteousness through the gospel of peace, and to use our faith in your word. Our faith has to link up to his word, not what we want. Oh, I have faith to do this thing. Let me tell you something. What is the word? <coughs> me and my wife, we are good partners in many ways. One of the ways is God speaks to me in the spirit. God speaks to my wife in the word. So we both have our own checking system, checks and balances. Without the word, I can't just operate in the spirit. Without the spirit, you can't operate just in the word. You got to have both. So we have to understand how to play this balancing act. Because our faith has to have a base, and that base is his word. Because his word is the one that will never fail. Not your faith. Amen. Amen. So he goes, he, 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 we lift up your people across our nation to be strengthened, empowered, equipped to stand against the plans of enemy. Thank you, God, that you hear our prayer of faith and recognize our stand. I have a few statements here. Standing in God's plan is a commandment. Standing in God's plan is a commandment. You don't play with it, you do it. What do you have with the commandment? Just do it. Just do it. Thou shalt not murder. Thou shalt not murder. Thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt not lie. When we take away the commandment and try to uh, 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 manipulate it and try to commit things that are not of God, what are we doing? We are executing devil's plan. That's what wickedness is. Stand against the plans of enemy. Thank you, God, that you hear our prayer of faith and recognize our stand. Standing in God's plan is a commandment. We need to do that as our life depends on it. <coughs> Maybe nobody told you this. Let me tell you this. If you are not standing, you are falling. Simple. If you are not standing, you are falling. That's why it's important that you stand. So not only we need to know what we are standing against, but also what we are standing for. We need to stand against the wiles of the devil. But I am here to encourage you, you need to stand for the glory of God. Amen. We are standing for greater glory. What is this great awakening that we are talking about? We are standing for that greater glory to fall on us. That great awakening is not going to happen without his glory. You don't even know what you have started right now. We are part of a big movement that more than you can imagine. You can't imagine what is happening. God is creating embers everywhere so we can become that big fire of awakening for this nation, yes. which leads us to the greatest reformation this land has ever experienced. Amen. This is nothing in comparison to the old revivals that have happened to revivals in this nation. So it's important that we understand not only we need to know what we are standing against, but also what we are standing for. Don't forget this whole mission of prayer as God has laid it on my heart. There is a great reset operation that is going on in this month. The great reset, if you don't know this, there is a group called World Economic Forum. Mm, sure. Those people, their mission is to have everybody under their control. Mm. That is their mission. Everybody do what they tell you, how, what is good for you. You know, this is their slogan. It would be easier for you, 
not, own, not to own anything. So they'll own every, everything and anything you can rent from them. That is their mission. As a matter of fact, they have enough funds to do that. And enough following all over the world to do that. The prime example for that is COVID-19. That's a trial run of how to control people of the world. They want one world principle. They want that one world notion. One world order. We need to understand we have one faith order. That is what we are connected to and that is what we are committed to. This month, I can already see these people, look at this, what they are trying to <coughs> say in the news. Oh, there's going to be a nu nuclear war. There's going to be a, a nuclear a Armageddon. I'm going to tell you something. That is why we are standing. Amen. That is why we are standing. There are so many other things that are happening all around. That's just one thing. There are so many other events that are happening that we need to stand against. And we are standing against the great reset while we are standing for great awakening. Amen? Amen. The next second day, it is from uh, Psalm 20 and 7 through 9 verses if you studied it. But the prayer point is this. Thank you, Lord, that we can trust in you. As a nation, we choose to bow down to you and you alone. This is not a conservative idea. This is not a liberal idea. This is not a Republican idea. This is not a Democratic idea. I could care less with power party you will affiliate with if you don't affiliate with God. The most important part is if you affiliate with God and your faith dictates you, then you will find a party that lines up with it. Amen? Amen. Because you answered our call for help. We rise and stand with you. You know, this is something God has said for, for Solomon when he built the temple. Most of us don't pay attention to this. If I ask you about this prayer, this verse, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and turn from their wickedness in prayer, I will heal the land, right? We know that verse. But where did God give that promise? This is where it happened. Study that story if you get, get a chance. This is where it happened. When God saw Solomon, he uh, dedicated the temple. He dedicated the Lord's temple. After he finished dedicating the temple, he was praying. And that was the time <coughs> where there was a, a greater glory that fell on the temple as never before. The Bible talks about it as Shekinah glory. Shakai, which is glory. It was so thick that people had to stoop down even to enter into the temple. Think about that. God's manifestation. There is so much that is manifesting all around us. Right now, you're getting ready to see some manifestations in your life that you would be surprised. You would be awestruck. Amen? Yeah. Our God is an awesome God. It's not just a song, you will see it. The awesomeness of him. Yes. Amen? Amen? So Solomon goes, and as, it, as the prayer goes on, God visits Solomon and says, If I ever drove you off because of your sin, because of your unrighteousness, if people, if my people can come back to this temple and stand there and pray, that's where he gives that instruction. That's why it's important that we pray together as a church. Because his commitment is not to you individually before he has a commitment to the church. Are you with me there? Yes. Because church is the operation here. He left. So he wants us to be a part of the church so we can see God flowing through us. So that's why it's important that we do this thing together. Nehemiah 9 5 says, Stand up and bless the Lord God forever and ever. How long am I going to praise God? Forever and ever. You would not change it just because the circumstances have changed. Just because your bank account has changed. 
Your praise in many ways is your key out of your mess. Out of your mess. Whatever the devil is trying to crumble you under, you have to be in a place where you can throw your hands up and say, praise you all. I like it when, whenever I talk to my, my, my people in India, first thing they say, praise the Lord. That's our greeting. Most of the Christians in India, first greeting they'll give you is praise the Lord. I like that greeting. If I call somebody that's a Christian, first thing they say is, oh, praise the Lord. Maybe that has to be our notion. Everything, first thing we start with praising. Amen. 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 Exodus 23 to 6. This is where, this is where. He says, you shall not have no other gods before me. <coughs> America as a nation right now has way too many gods. Mm -hmm. Amen. We have way too many idols. And we have way too many idols, altars. If you really want to see the building of God's altar, destroy those altars. You can do it in the spirit. Amen. You can and you should. That is part of stand. Let me tell you something. The altar the UAD have built, let it be dead in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. They cannot prosper. That's a weapon that is formed against us, not for us. When somebody is trying to take away your right to choose, that's not a weapon formed for you, it's a formed against you. Amen. If I want to rent our own, it's none of your business, it's mine. If I want to get vaccinated or not, that's none of your business, it's mine. That's right. Amen? Amen? You cannot be mandating me with the things that I don't want to participate. Yeah. At the same note, they try to force us not to force our religion on them. But what are they doing? They are forcing their religion on us. Yes, amen. They go to all these poor nations, buy their properties, buy their waters. They control them. All these people, they want them to do what they want them to do. America, it's important that we stand up. That we stand up and bless the Lord God forever. You, America, you shall have no other gods before me. Amen. Thus says the Lord. It is his commandment. This is his prophecy. This is his requirement for us. Lord, we repent of our idol worship. We have built the idols of adultery. We have built the idols of homosexuality. We have built the idols of finances. We have built every idol. Every altar but the altar of the Lord. <laughs> Covenant Fusion Church. I told you this in the past. I will tell you again. We are church pulpit rebuilders. Okay. We are church pulpit rebuilders. I have to take you for a minute here. When we went to uh, uh, the islands, the Pine Island and the, and the Sanibel Island. The things that are there was completely destroyed. When you see the pictures, when you, you know, the pictures what we have put out there are nothing in comparison to what we have seen. Mm -hmm. For a long time that we were there on the island, we were jaw dropped. Mm -hmm. We couldn't even pick our camera to take a picture. Mm -hmm. That's how it has become. Something that has been abandoned, something that has been destroyed for years. You know, a lot of the people do, don't know, a lot of the public didn't know what happened there. While the hurricane was happening, there were three tornadoes that happened on that island, Sarabal Island. Mm -hmm. Wow. That destroyed everything, that pulled everything out. Mm -hmm. Stripped naked. Mm -hmm. You know, the hotel rooms where we have back-to-back -back rooms, you can walk through them because the wall in between is gone. That sort of thing have happened. And when I saw that thing, it just feels like, man, it is hopeless. There is nothing we can do about it. Remember this thing. This is what God have inspired that day. What happened when I saw the earth without form? In the book of Genesis, chapter 1. When the Lord, the earth was without form. 
he dictated form for it. Let there be light. Let there be awakening. I was so happy to do a live stream video from that land because it, it was so prophetic for me. That we are at the point of that destruction and we are speaking resurrection and we are speaking about the awakening. Because we are bound for restoration. Mm -hmm. <coughs> my, my, my buddy who works in, the, in uh, 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 insurance as an insurance adjuster. When he was asking, asking me, like how, oh, what is this? How, we, how, do, uh, uh, how does it look and whatnot? I was telling him, man, it is so bad. It is so bad. I don't think they're going to rebuild it. And then he was like, no, they will rebuild it. No, what I meant by that is they will re destroy everything and have to build from scratch. However they will do, whatever they will do. But one thing we know, we will rebuild. But as a human being, if we can do that, can't we not rebuild the temple of God? Mm -hmm. That's why don't look at the church and think it is of no form. The same thing has been given to us by God. God said, let there be light. And I'm charging you, church, that we speak, let there be revival. Let there be great awakening. Let there be great restoration. Let there be resurrection in Jesus' name. Amen. That ought to be our declaration. So he says, you shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or is in the earth beneath, or that is water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them, nor sow them. Church, let that be a declaration for us. I shall not bow down to them, nor will I sow them. My servitude is unto the Lord. For I the Lord your God am jealous God. Visiting the iniquity of fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me. But showing mercy to thousands of generations. Are you with me here? We think great evil is upon us. Church, if we can position ourselves for his great mercy, we have his great mercy upon us. Amen. But showing mercy to thousands, those who love me and keep my commandments. The key, keep my commandments. Mm -hmm. Day 3, Genesis 12 to, 12, 2 to, 2 to 3. I will make you a great nation. I will break you a great nation. This nation is not great because it has money. Not great because it has innovation. <coughs> but this nation is great because he's this God, the God of the Bible. God of the Bible. Not any other God. But we have become like Israelites where we started worshipping the idols of the land. You being a Christian, let, let me also tell you something. Something else is going on right now around our, our, our society. Everybody is trying to shut your mouth. By saying you are a Christian nationalist. As though it is a bad thing. I'm praying for this nation. If you call me a Christian nationalist, it's okay. I'm a Christian nationalist. Amen. I'm not trying to go kill somebody. I'm praying. I'm standing against the evil forces. The resetting forces. The evil that is coming upon my land. Yeah. It is my job to stand. And I'm standing. You call me names. God bless you. I could care less. Let me tell you something, you're a big guy. Amen. You don't know how to operate in God. When you don't understand how God is operating. They're labeling, you, labeling us, that's okay. This, this is not the first time you have ever been called names. What's the big deal now? The early church has been called names, so many names. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. 
I will curse him who curses you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Remember that we are still the beacon of hope for the world. There is no hope without resurrection. The true hope is dependent on our belief in resurrection. Prayer point the United States of America is a great nation. The United States of America is a blessed nation. The United States of America is a blessing. Yes. They may have done things wrong, but we are bringing it back. Mm -hmm. It has done, it has so much of dark history, I do not deny that. I do have a dark, dark history. So do you. Otherwise, we don't need a savior. Mm -hmm. Our greatness depends on His glory, but not on our human achievement. We always try to showcase our greatness, how great we are. No! Let our greatness come from the Lord. In God we trust. That's why He says in Romans 3.27, Where is the boasting then? It is excluded. You don't have the right to boast. No. <coughs> you don't have the right to boast about this land. If it wasn't for God, if it wasn't for God, this nation will not stand. Mm. If it wasn't for, the, for God, you won't stand. Amen? Amen. By what law of words? No, but the law of faith. That's what the church's job is. Let's operate in the law of faith. I'm going to fourth day. Deuteronomy 11, 8. Therefore you shall keep every commandment which I command you today, that you may be strong and go in and possess the land which you cross over to possess. There are so many instructions right there. First job, your job is to possess. Possess. God's promises are not going to fall into your lap. You've got to go and possess. If you want to possess, it's going to take effort. It's going to take work. It's going to put you in a place where you have to work. Your work is not a work of physical things, but your work is a work of faith. I really pray that, the, that, the, that what the Spirit of the Lord is speaking, that you can hear. I do. I do. Sometimes it is hard for me to express everything that is in my spirit. That's why I pray the Holy Spirit will reveal more to you than what I am sharing. He wants us to be strong. He wants us to go possess. He wants us to cross over. Cross over. It's a very big problem for us. We are still in the world. We don't try to cross over. Prayer point. Help us as a nation to keep your commandments. To be strong and to take ownership of our country that you have blessed us with. It requires strength mm. to stand. It requires strength. That's why in your weakness is your strength. Amen. When you can find yourself weak, you will find your strength. Amen. Because that's where your faith kicks in. Mm. I don't know, God, how to do this thing. You know what? I need you. We don't know how to do this standing, Father, but I need you. That is where you're acknowledging your weakness and accepting his strength. In your weakness is his strength. Can you find your weakness? That's why I tell people, don't fast with your sheer will. It's not about that. Amen? Amen. Strength is required for you to possess his promises. 2 Corinthians 12 chapter starting at verse 9. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Not because you got it all covered, but because you have nothing. It's a hard pill to swallow, particularly for men. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities 
that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. What are you doing? You're resting the power on you. It's a little scary for me to step out, God. It is a little scary for me to step this way. It's a little scary for me to step up, but I need you. My knees buckle every time I preach, but I need you, Lord. I need you. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distress, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. He's not leaving you weak, but rather he is empowering you to be strong. Amen. But you cannot have God's strength if you are strong by yourself. He's not going to pour out into a filled vessel. Remember that. His pouring is only out of the empty vessels. Even if I can do it myself, I always try to break myself down. Lord, I need your help. I need you to help me out. I have done this million and one times, God, but still, I need you. Because you know why? I'm good at messing up things. That's why the Bible says, acknowledge him in all your ways, so he may direct your Day 5, Proverbs 14, 11. The house of the wicked will be overthrown, but the tent of the upright will flourish. Prayer point. We confess that our righteous nation will flourish. Wickedness cannot prevail in our nation. This is what the Lord has laid on my heart. I believe the next month is where I believe in, in the month of November. There will be a phenomenal wealth transfer. Amen. A phenomenal if you can step up in faith mm. it's yours mm -hmm. it's yours yes. mm -hmm. how am I going to get it? it you just believe it mm -hmm. Proverbs 13 22 a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children <coughs> but the wealth of the sin or the wicked is stored up for the I'm not asking you to go covet somebody else's wealth. No. It's a sin. <laughs> but let God do his job. Amen. Without knowing, you will be receiving things that you have been desiring for. Even the things, many things that are coming your way, you may not even know how, what to do with them. But I'm here to tell you, operate in the kingdom. Those are for kingdom purpose. Because you are for kingdom purpose. And I have already seen the doors have been opened already. I, I have the sense of the floodgate. Yes, hallelujah. Church, I'm asking you, it is time for you to dig your heels and stand. Yes. Oh, are you talking about money? Yes. You need money to preach gospel. Amen. Or are you money minded? Are you those prosperity gospel preachers? I don't know what you want to label me. I could care less. God is the one who promised to meet my needs, not you. Amen. And he said that he will meet my needs according to his riches, yes. not mine. Amen. You know why? If your heart is right with God, when God gives you, you're always looking opportunities to bless others. That has been us as a Covenant Fusion Church. The people that were suffering out there in Fort Myers, we immediately gathered our money. We immediately gathered our resources. We put ourselves together. Let's go be a blessing. Amen. Amen. And let me also tell you, we are going to continue to be a blessing in the community. We have big plans for them. We want to be a blessing for the community. What government can do, we will do it with church. Amen. Amen. So I encourage you to continue to pray. Stand fast for our nation. Day 6. Ask of me, I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. Remember, it is not just you. It's about the nations of the earth. Yes. But when you see the glory of God, it will spread. When you are broke without God's glory, what are you going to give? 
You can't give what you do not have. Those people don't need your money before they need the glory of God. Let us be somebody who can channel the glory of God so we may be the distributors of God's glory. That's why God has commanded us to grow from faith to faith, from glory to glory. Thank you, Lord, for giving us this great nation as our inheritance. Help us to take ownership by trusting you to lead our country in your plan. Matthew 13, 31, 32. Another parable he put forth to them saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all the seeds. But when it is grown, it is greater than herbs. And becomes a tree. That is what we are to be as a nation. A tree of glory. A tree of his glory. What happens when you become that tree? So that the birds of the air come and nest in its branches. We give the gospel of peace to the nations. We give the gospel of resurrection to the nations. The gospel that we are giving is broke. Because it is more driven from your feelings, not from resurrection. Because you are still stuck in your feelings. They offended me. They hurt my feelings. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. You have a million and one of those feelings. You will get hurt a million and one times. Mm -hmm. If you don't learn how to move past your feelings. I like the robot Joyce Meyer does. What about me? What about me? What about me? You know, the robot. I don't want to do that. <laughs> oh, come on. So every nation shall see the glory of the Lord upon our nation. That is a prophecy that God has given. Every nation shall see the glory of the Lord upon our nation. Day 7. Prayer point. Psalm 64. And from there the prayer point is. <coughs> Jesus said. I give you power over all the darkness. How much of darkness? All the darkness. Come on church. How much of darkness? All. all the darkness decree and declare over your cities don't let them go to hell in a handbasket get them to heaven get them to heaven because you live in it because you live in it pray for the peace of the land that you dwell in so it may have peace Speak against, take authority over evil. Speak against the darkness in our cities and states. Pull down strongholds. Decree and declare that the evil be exposed. Aren't we in a time where evil is getting exposed? Amen. Continue to declare, let the evil come out. Amen. Whatever that are plotting against the will of God, whatever the system might be doing, the godless notion, godless things in this nation, well, I don't care whether you are FBI or whether you are Congress, whether you are a uh, uh, White House, I don't care. Let the evil be exposed in Jesus' name. Let the true righteousness prevail. Let the righteousness of God prevail upon this nation. Not the evil that they are trying to indoctrinate our children. Our children are being forced into molestation. True. Amen. In schools, what they are trying to teach our children is no less than forced molestation. Yeah. We cannot sit idle, y'all. We cannot. It's time that we take authority. It's time that we decree and declare the oracles of the Lord. Schools, if you see, speak peace over them. Righteous laws be coming upon them. Righteous education be upon those schools. Not the unrighteous. There are so many Christians that are interested in going to a yoga club than to a church. Isn't that sad? Isn't that sad?
Deuteronomy 28, 2 to 3. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city. Blessed shall you be in the country. There is no place his blessing is not going to cover you, not work for you. So I hope you got more insight into the seven things that we have prayed. I just want us to, do what I, my attempt is to dig our heels in. God willing, I'll be doing again the next seven days as well. I encourage you why I am talking about these things. We need to engage in these prayers. Okay. Engage in these prayers. Like I said, if you can't fast, if you can't, don't worry. Engage in the prayer. Yeah. Own it. Take ownership of these prayers. Share it with anybody and everybody. Bless them. This is not for you. This is for us. We have been given this commission. We are in a place to bless. Amen. Amen. Don't look at your numbers. Don't look at your possibilities. Look at God's possibilities. Mm -hmm. Step up in faith. Step out in faith. Share. Touch people. Explain things to them. Encourage people to get in line with this. Amen. Amen. You got something out of this? Yes. All right. If you got it, let's stand to our feet so we may end our service. With our confession. We ready? Yes. All right. Three, two, one. We are Covenant Fusion Church. We are a body of believers. We are blessed to be a blessing. And we are filled for His glory. Amen. God bless you. We love you. Please stay tuned for United America Tour. God is doing amazing things. The awakening is upon us. Amen. Amen. God bless you.